Do any of the vaccines on the childhood uh, schedule contain monkey kidney cells? Uh, well, the polio vaccine uh, does. Are you aware of any simian, monkey, viruses, meaning viruses that come from primates, that contaminated polio vaccines and infected individuals receiving the polio vaccine? Yes, SV40. Okay. And what does SV40 stand for? Simian virus 40. Okay. And what, was it the 40th simian virus found? Is that yes. why it's called? Are you aware of any virus from any animal other than simian or bovine that is in any vaccine? Yes, uh, there's a pig virus uh, present in uh, one of the rotavirus vaccines, uh, circovirus. Do any of the vaccines in the childhood vaccine schedule contain blood serum from calves or other bovines? Uh, calf serum is removed before uh, the vaccine is used because you don't want to uh, sen uh, um, sensitize the vaccinee to, uh, to cows. What is this? Uh, vaccine excipient and media summary. Can you go to Kinrix on the first page? Yes. ZTAP IPV. Do you see in the third line down, it says calf serum? Do any vaccines on the childhood schedule contain embryonic guinea pig cell cultures? Varicella uh, vaccine was passaged in guinea pig cells. Do you know of any vaccines contain cow's milk in it? Derived from oh, cow's well, milk? Oh, well, it could be. Uh, casein, for example, could be. If there was casein in the vaccine, a child could become sensitized to that, correct? Well, I'm not sure about that. You're not sure um, anymore about that? Do any vaccines contain egg protein? Oh, uh, yes, influenza. Do any vaccines contain gelatin from pigs? Uh, yes. Do any vaccines in the childhood vaccine schedule contain human albumin? Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is human albumin? Human albumin is part of human serum. It's part of the blood that is liquid. Right. None of it remains in the final product? I don't believe so, no. Because yeah, that could be problematic, right? Well, it could be. I mean, if, uh, if the uh, individual is not, not healthy. Or, or if maybe some of the human blood components bind to some of the aluminum and develop antibodies, self-antibodies, correct? If they develop antibodies against a serum component, that would not be good. Do any vaccines on the childhood vaccine schedule contain MRC5 human diploid cells? Yes. Rubella, uh, varicella, hepatitis A. What are MRC5 cells? They are human fibroblast uh, cell strain. They were created by uh, taking uh, fetal tissue and um, uh, from a particular uh, fetus that was uh, aborted uh, by maternal choice uh, and the cells, uh, the so-called fibroblast cells, were cultivated. Do any vaccines on the childhood vaccine schedule contain WI-38 human diploid lung fibroblasts? Well, they used to, but I don't think anything is made in those cells anymore. If you could turn to page three for MMR and MMRV, do you see that within the ingredient list that lists WI-38 human diploid lung fibroblasts? Uh, yes, I do see that. Uh, isn't it true that human DNA in vaccines is typically purposely fragmented? Yes, and I would say mostly um, for theoretical reasons, doesn't want to uh, put uh, DNA uh, into, uh, intact DNA uh, into vaccines. Are you familiar with insertional mutagenesis? Yes. Do you have any study to show that injecting millions of pieces of human DNA into babies and children is safe? The only studies are all the safety studies that have been done on vaccines. Okay. Wasn't the purpose of this study to help develop a human cell line or to support the use of human cell lines in the creation of vaccines? The idea was to study the uh, cell strains from fetuses to determine whether or not they could be used to make vaccines. This study involved 74 fetuses. Yeah, 76. 76. Mm -hmm. And uh, these fetuses uh, were th all three months or older when aborted, correct? Yes. Okay. 
what organs did you harvest from these fetuses? Well, I didn't personally harvest any, but uh, a, a whole range of uh, tissues were harvested um, by uh, co-workers. Okay. And these pieces were then cut up into little pieces, right? Yes. And they were cultured? Yes. Okay. Um, some of the pieces of the fetuses were pituitary gland that were, that were chopped up into pieces to, mm -hmm. okay, included the lung of the fetuses? Yes. Okay, included the skin? Yes. Kidney? Yes. Spleen? Yes. Heart? Y yes. Okay. And, and tongue? <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't recall, but yeah, probably yes. When you were a child, what vaccines did you receive? <laughs> uh, diphtheria? Uh, well, uh, uh, in childhood, I, I think it was probably only diphtheria. Si vamos al buscador y ponemos CDC Vaccine Ingredients, que se refiere a CDC por el Centro Control de Enfermedades, ingredientes de vacunas, vamos a ubicar entre los resultados este que dice excipientes, más adelante tabla 2. Acá está la lista de todas las vacunas con sus ingredientes y al comienzo una breve explicación sobre los antígenos que son virus o bacterias, los conservantes para prevenir la contaminación, por ejemplo timerosal que es mercurio muy neurotóxico, ayudantes para ayudar a estimular una respuesta inmune más fuerte como el aluminio, también neurotóxico, estabilizadores como gelatinas, otras trazas residuales de materiales que se usaron durante el proceso de fabricación, como materiales de cultivo celular de fetos humanos abortados, riñón de mono, proteína de huevo, ingredientes utilizados para matar virus, por ejemplo formaldehído, y antibióticos para prevenir la contaminación por bacteria como neomicina. La siguiente tabla enumera todos los componentes de las diferentes vacunas. Hemos puesto color a alguno de estos para demostrar que se encuentran en la mayoría de las vacunas y son productos considerados tóxicos y o mutagénicos. Para comprobar la toxicidad del polisorbato 80, por ejemplo, tenemos que ir al sitio web de sciencelab.com. Una vez aquí, vamos al link Chemicals MSDS Listing y entramos al listado de la seguridad de los diferentes productos o materiales. De ahí nos vamos a la letra P. Y encontramos por isorbato 80. Hacemos clic para ver los estudios sobre este. Y en la sección de información sobre toxicidad dice Puede causar efectos reproductivos adversos basados en datos de pruebas con animales. Luego dice, puede causar cáncer basado en animales, puede afectar el material genético, o sea que es mutagénico, es decir, cambia la información genética. Y agrega, no se han encontrado estudios con humanos. Si alguien quiere más información, puede ir al sitio del Centro Nacional de Información Biotecnológica con siglas NCBI y en este sitio hay un link que va a PubMed. PubMed significa publicaciones médicas. En este caso tenemos el nombre del estudio, lo ponemos en el buscador del sitio de PubMed y acá está uno de los estudios que demuestra los problemas del polisorbato 80 que encontramos en el documento anterior sobre efectos reproductivos adversos. Volviendo a los ingredientes, estos son los de la vacuna contra sarampión, paperas y rubiola, MMR. Vemos que utilizan líneas de células de fetos humanos abortados. Esta es la lista de vacunas que utilizan estos ingredientes, es decir, vacunas que utilizan líneas de células fetales humanas. La doctora Deicher tiene un doctorado en fisiología molecular y celular en la Universidad de Stanford y nos alerta de los problemas con este tipo de ingredientes what's called a change point, or a very steep rise in the UK in autism in 1988. 
And a rise like that is always due to some environmental factor. And what had happened in 1988 was they switched from using animal cells to using the human fetal cells. And what we found was that every time a fetal vaccine is introduced, autism rates go up. Las vacunas pueden contagiar. Lo podemos leer en el prospecto de la vacuna MMR2 de Laboratorios Merck que dice. Se ha producido la excreción de pequeñas cantidades de virus de la rubiola atenuado vivo de la nariz o la garganta en la mayoría de las personas susceptibles de 7 a 28 días después de la vacunación. Más adelante dice... Estudios recientes han demostrado que las mujeres postparto lactantes vacunadas con vacuna viva atenuada contra la rubiola puede secretar el virus en la leche materna y lo transmite a los lactantes. La guía del paciente del hospital Johns Hopkins advierte a los inmunocomprometidos de evitar el contacto con los niños que están vacunados recientemente con vacunas con virus como la varicela, el sarampión, la rubiola, la gripe, la polio o la viruela. Los recientemente vacunados no pueden hacer visitas a los inmunocomprometidos porque los pueden contagiar. We saw the major drops in the death from the many infectious diseases, say starting at 1900, when they started keeping records, 1900, 1910, until about 1940, 1950. Those, those rates of those diseases dropped dramatically. Before the vaccines were ever introduced, they dropped over 90%. And so the bigger drops were before the vaccines were produced. This graph shows the decline of all five diseases. Some declined before a vaccine, Others declined without one. Well, you know, when you talk about how much money the, the vaccine program costs, costs the American public, we're spending uh, billions of dollars on vaccines. And maybe we would better, be better served if we took that billions of dollars and spent it on hygiene and good food and maybe the, the availability of antibiotics in certain areas. Because I think antibiotics and hygiene have done a lot more to uh, reduce the amount of infectious diseases in this country than have the vaccine program.